Dankeschön. Momentum, a word we use to describe mass in motion. What does momentum mean to you? To some, it represents drive, power, strength. When I asked my six-year-old daughter what momentum means to her, she thought of Mentos. <laughs> Mentos? At first, I chalked up her answer to a child's simple word association. I mean, you actually can pull the word Mento from momentum. But let's roll with this. My daughter, like many of you, I bet, knows the thrill of tossing Mentos into a liter of Diet Coke and watching them erupt sky high. Go! Oh, it's not gonna work! <laughs> that explosive upward motion, the momentum of it, is really exciting, right? Particularly to a six-year-old, and clearly also to me. That explosive energy feels a lot like the momentum of our city, Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln is experiencing a period of remarkable progress. You see it when building cranes crowd our skyline. You feel it when you hear what band is playing at the arena next. Can you believe that Paul McCartney came to Lincoln? <laughs> or when you read about the latest startup, or bike one of our newest trails, or when you just think to yourself, hmm, so what top 10 list did we make this week? It's tempting to assume that this momentum is to be expected, a natural part of our evolution from smaller town to bigger city. Progress as inevitable as that explosion created by Mentos dropped in Diet Coke. I'm not here to talk about popping candy, though. I'm here as your city councilwoman and friend to share with you just how intentional Lincoln's momentum truly is. We who call Lincoln home have made deliberate, meaningful, thoughtful choices that have ignited Lincoln's momentum and given it purposeful direction. How have we done this? Why does it matter? Many of the answers can be found, like the word mento, in the word momentum itself. I see omen and mute, and there's one. It's an intriguing collection of words, one, mute, omen. Some of them sound a little bit dark for a discussion on forward motion. How do these words fit together to create momentum? Let's start with one. Cities gain momentum when citizens unite around a shared priority when many of us work together as one. Strong partnerships between visionary business leaders, a supportive city hall, and committed citizens have played a key role in Lincoln's trajectory of growth. Here is a shining example of how partnerships propel Lincoln forward, our Pinnacle Bank Arena. Lincoln voters chose to get behind this $340 million project, and that kind of significant investment only happens with broad community support. This story began way back in 2005 when local business leaders first conceived of how an arena might transform Lincoln into a more competitive 21st century city. They brought together leaders from all over the community, the University of Nebraska, City Hall, the Vision 2015 group, architects, designers, all came together to work on this one plan and they brought many ideas to the table. How to unify their many ideas? Well, at one point, these arena leaders, people like Mike Dunlap, Jim Abel, Wendy Birdsall, Dan Marvin, Doc Sadler, they boarded a plane and they flew around the country to look at other arenas, to physically see possibility, to create a common vision. Now, creating this common vision was a painstaking process, and it didn't happen during one airplane ride. Arena leaders spent four years crafting their plan and tweaking minor details like how to move railroad tracks that stood in the way. Once they agreed upon their vision, they shared it with all of us. They brought it to the community and they spent another entire year doing just that. They held over 100 town hall meetings and invited business groups, neighborhood associations, Kiwanis and Rotary Clubs, and they encourage people to ask hard questions. In some cases, these arena leaders got a little bit more than they bargained for. Dick Campbell once found himself fielding questions from a friend who opposed the arena while both of them were buck naked in the showers at Prairie Life. <laughs> I wasn't there, I just heard about it. 
people like Dick Campbell's friend in the locker room showers, who eventually voted for the arena, by the way, or the people who turned up at those town hall meetings. These folks eventually became the ones answering questions about the arena and spreading the word about the project to their friends and families at dinner parties or at uh, Little League games. This deliberate effort to involve Lincoln citizens meant that momentum for the project grew. More and more people united around one vision. This kind of collaboration is crucial to civic progress. After all, as we learn in physics, momentum depends on both the velocity and mass of the object in motion. And when we amass a greater coalition of people to accomplish a shared aim, as we did with this arena project, we move forward with greater momentum. Now, out of momentum also comes mute. <laughs> did you hear that? That was the sound of us listening. And another lesson that we can pull from our city's momentum is that sometimes it's not what you say, but rather what you don't say that achieves progress. Now, I do not mean that we should remain mute in the face of indignities or injustice. But what I do mean is that oftentimes progress depends upon hitting our mute buttons when it's time to listen. We all know the stereotype of politicians who love to hear themselves talk. <laughs> but one of the most important things I do in my role as a public servant is to hit my mute button and listen. Here's an example. Raise your hand if you've heard of the M Street Park Blocks. <laughs> my daughter, she's heard me rehearse. <laughs> Well, there's a reason that none of you except my daughter have heard of the M Street Park Blocks. The Park Blocks, at one time, were a signature element of our city's downtown master plan. They were designed to be a green space that ran along M Street. And they included an eastbound bike lane along with a companion westbound bike lane on neighboring N Street. And together, these two bike lanes were meant to form a new transit connection between the Haymarket and Antelope Valley. The Park Blocks also were designed to make downtown a more appealing place to live, a tree-lined oasis perfect for walks over the lunch hour or bike rides with friends and family, a leafy boulevard for farmer's markets and festivals. They were going to be idyllic, which is why I was excited when a developer finally came forward to the city with a project for one of these M Street blocks. And it was the perfect block, a blank slate, a, a surface parking lot. Finally, this was going to be a golden chance to kick off the Park Blocks plan, or at least so I thought. In the end, the developer determined that he couldn't make room for the requirements of the Park Blocks. And even if he could make it all fit on an empty lot, he didn't see how the plan was realistic for those other blocks, the ones on M Street that already had buildings on them. I wanted the Park Blocks to survive. I got married in a church on the park blocks in Portland, Oregon, and I know how dynamic and valuable they can be for a downtown. The last thing I wanted to do was hit my mute button. Yet as momentum for the park blocks stalled, City Hall went back to the community and listened. And what we heard was that the most essential element of this concept wasn't that leafy boulevard, but rather the bike lanes. Downtown businesses, like the bike lanes as a tool for recruiting millennial workers. Cyclists needed this crucial missing link in our city's 128-mile trail network, and everyone was interested in finding ways to reduce the demand for parking downtown. Ultimately, we developed a new plan that consolidated both of the bike lanes on N Street, where we had room for a two-lane bikeway, even room for a small strip of green space meant to protect those cyclists from traffic, provide a little stormwater management, and add curb appeal. The N Street Bikeway, under construction right now, you may have noticed, is a far cry from the original Park Blocks plan, but it delivers on what we heard was the most essential element of that plan. These changes may seem like the opposite of momentum, but they aren't. In the case of the Park Blocks, hitting our mute buttons and listening kept us pedaling forward instead of coasting to a stop. Now, how else can we keep Lincoln pedaling forward, encouraging its momentum? One important way is to be on the lookout for omens. The word omen, it hints at superstition. It sounds a little bit dark, but here I use it to represent a potential obstacle to our progress. We spot omens, or potential obstacles, 
by studying the horizon. We look beyond the many important immediate benefits generated by our city's growth, and we consider the challenges our growth may bring. One challenge I see in our growth, future is water. As a city grows, so does its thirst. And, and satisfying the thirst of a growing population is essential not just to momentum, but also to our very survival. Here's how thirsty we were in 2014. In Lincoln, we consumed 12.6 billion gallons of water. That means each of us uses about 47,000 gallons of water per year. In my house, most of that comes from my 12-year-old daughter's showers. <laughs> but this sounds like a lot of water, and it is, but wait until you hear how much water we think we'll need in the future. Today, Lincoln's population is about 273,000 people. And by the year 2040, we expect to be at least 372,000 people. To support this growth that we all want, we are going to have to be thoughtful about how we find the water we need. We project we'll need, on average, an additional five to six billion gallons of water per year by the year 2040. And that's a 40% increase over what we use today. 40%. Confronting a problem like this is hard. When we look for answers and think about what we should do and, and how to do it and when, I see two, at least two. The first is conservation. And the good news here is that in Lincoln, we've reduced our per person residential water use since the 1980s by almost 25%. And we can do more through conservation. Yet every community has a threshold for conservation. And it depends on two things, how much water we have available and how willing we are to limit our use of it. What is the minimum amount of water we need for our basic needs, our health and cleanliness? Are we ready to move away from turf lawns? What are we willing to sacrifice to reduce our demand for water? Another part of the answer will be to go out and find new water supply. Today, all of Lincoln's municipal water comes from one place, and that's the Platte River. And the amount of water that our city wells can pump depends on the river flow of the Platte. And when those flow levels are low, or when we experience drought like we did in 2012, our water supply takes a hit. To address this, the city recently built a new well. But we expect we'll need even more capacity by the year 2018, and that's less than three years away. And looking further on that horizon, we project that we'll need to go out and find a brand new water source, like the Missouri River, by the year 2040. Confronting a challenge like this one before it becomes a problem at hand is hard. It often means that all of us will make individual sacrifices for the common good. A beloved community volunteer, Roger Larson, was fond of saying, we all drink from wells we did not dig. This may be a time when we need to think about that expression in literal terms if we want to overcome this potential obstacle to our city's momentum. So these wells that Roger Larson mentioned, the ones that we drink from, that we may or may not have dug, they're a metaphor for understanding the key to our city's momentum. Lincoln's momentum began with the people who came before us, who dug wells and got things flowing. And now, it's up to all of us to keep digging and to keep things flowing. Do you see this amazing word momentum? When repeated, it forms a chain of moments and use. Our momentum is a result of thousands of use connected moment by moment over time. The work you do each day, your volunteer contributions, the ideas you pursue, these moments are critical, not just to your success, but also to our cities. You are what give mass, velocity, and direction to Lincoln's momentum. What will each of you do, what will we do, to keep this momentum alive today, tomorrow, and the moment after that? When you think about our community, what's one thing that you'd like to preserve, or address, or improve? Whatever comes to mind, whether it's a miracle or a mento, think about using the words one, mute, and omen to harness momentum for it. Because here in Lincoln, where our exciting momentum appears as inevitable as that explosion created by mentos dropped in Diet Coke, know that it isn't. 
It's up to all of us to dig wells today together. So we may continue to propel Lincoln forward deliberately, thoughtfully, meaningfully into our very bright and shared future. Momentum, anyone? <laughs> <laughs>